Hi all, this is your Professor Ian. Um, I just thought I'd uh, send out a quick uh, mini lecture just dealing with the uh, the books we've been, um, I shouldn't say books, the texts we've been reading about uh, post-humanism that I've given you as an alternative to the road. Uh, I hope you're enjoying them. These are some of my uh, favorite recent stories. I was um, not planning to teach these this semester, but uh, I was planning to teach them uh, in the fall. I was going to change my course uh, and move from the road more to, more to think about post-humanism as a kind of different topic. So I thought I'd just uh, preview some of these texts right now as an alternative to the road because, you know, not everybody wants to read the road right now, and I get that. So anyways, let me just talk a little bit about these uh, these texts and how you might approach essay number three. Uh, that's due, your rough draft is due this Thursday, so you should probably be writing it. So hopefully this video is just going to give you some um, ideas to help you refine some of your own ideas. Um, and hopefully this is useful for you as you start writing. So of course, your first task is to look over the instructions and choose one of the two prompts that I've given you. Um, the first prompt is, what does it mean to be human? Are the people from the people of Sand and Slag human? Is Wally human? Uh, will we still be human after the singularity? What makes a person a human? Right? Are these different terms? How are these different? What, what do they mean? What do we mean by human? Um, I remember singularity, I think a couple people asked me about this, I put out some definitions. Singularity is just a term that uh, futurists use to talk about that moment when technology uh, becomes so powerful and uh, it's able to alter what it means to be human in a, like a fundamental way. Uh, you know, some people look to the not, not even the distant future, but the fairly near future when we're able to like do gene editing or create robotic um, components for bodies or uh, create artificial intelligence or upload consciousness to the internet. All of these things could be referred to as a kind of singularity, um, right? Usually, a lot of the time, singularity is used to describe, though, that moment when human consciousness can become digital and, and, and take on a different form, right? Um, so by singularity, I'm, I'm mostly referring to those other two stories, uh, valedictorian and staying behind. But I mean, you could you could describe it in other ways. The the weevil the weevil technology and the people of sand and slag is a kind of singularity as well. Um, and in Wally, the humans are also in a way kind of post human, right? The the big fat humans that, that ride around on the um, Kind of like floating chairs in their spaceship right they, they they're in a world that's so technologically advanced they don't need to have any kind of physical labor so they're able to live like this and have all their needs met by robots and such so there's a kind of it's i mean it's obviously meant to be kind of satirical but it's also it is a kind of uh, a vision of what technology could do for us in the future anyway so that's the first prompt what does it mean to be human if you're going to choose that prompt you're going to want to lay out what you um how you would define human Right? That's going to be your first task in that paper. Uh, you know, your introduction should set that up, maybe the next paragraph, get into that a bit, and then start talking about some texts, right? some of the fictional texts that we've been using, um, and then using some, uh, some of the academic articles you find on your own. You could use that, uh, that one, uh, why I want to be a post-human when I grow up, if you, if you find that would be useful for the, 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 this one. You could probably get stuff out of it that would be useful. So you can use that. That could be one of your sources. And then you have to find at least one more. Uh, so uh, when you're setting this up, what it means to be human, try to you know move beyond human. Humans have two legs and we walk around. Well, four legs, but we walk around on two of them. We're bipedal and we, we're mammals and we um, eat food to survive. That kind of you know basic stuff, right? We want to get to something more interesting that you can write about and really form a good argument about like, um, does being human require us to be able to empathize for other beings? Um, does human being human mean that we're able to um, connect with others through uh, cultural artifacts, through movies and books and that kind of stuff? Are we able to tell our stories and connect with each other on emotional levels through storytelling? Is that what it means to be human? Right? And remember, you don't have to cover everything about what it means to be human. This is just one aspect. You could even phrase that in your thesis statement. One of the most important things about being human is the ability to blah, 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 blah. Right? So remember, you only have about five pages. I think I set a minimum of five pages for this one. Uh, yeah, so five pages. That's because you're using outside sources too. So you're going to, you know, five pages is going to fly by. So you need to be narrow about this. You can't talk about what's every idea of what it means to be human. 
Okay, and then the second prompt I gave you is what do these texts tell us about what, what we value now and what anxiety we have about the impact of foreseeable technological advan advancements. So less about being human and more about our anxiety about technology. Are we, uh, and you know, there's a number of ways to approach this, you know, and Wally obviously, uh, Wally is cleaning up a, a world that's been destroyed by our wasteful ways. So is that, is that part of what we worry about with technology that it's just this wasteful garbage creating technology and we're gonna kill ourselves before we're able to uh, uh, deal with the, the waste products that we're producing from our production of technology right, the fossil fuels and all this kind of stuff, is that, um, is that part of it? Or the people of sand and slag, uh, you know, by changing humans, will we lose something that's essentially human about us? Uh, and then the two stories about the singularity, about, you know, uploading human consciousness to the, to the, the digital world, um, you know, do we lose, are we truly human if we're able to do that, if we do that, if we take that choice? That's, you know, one of the central questions of those two stories. And so when I was setting up these prompts, I kind of had in mind that prompt number one, what does it mean to be human, would be more if you wanted to use the first two texts we looked at, the people of Sand and Slag and Wally. -E. And then the second uh, prompt uh, about anxiety and technology would be more about, would be better suited for the second two texts that we used. That's how I had it in mind. I mean, obviously you can play around with that, but that's kind of why I set those two prompts. Uh, that's why I, I, I set up those two prompts as I did, right, to allow to you to kind of group these stories in different ways. You can play with it. Obviously, you can talk about um, what does it mean to be human using the two the two later stories. Uh, they're actually pretty good for that as well. Um, and you could talk about anxieties using the first two stories. Anxieties and technologies in the first two stories. They're actually pretty good. But that's kind of how I set it up. So, anyways, let me just talk a little bit about each of the stories. Uh, so the people of sand and slag. Um, it's kind of, it's, I mean, I, I think it's a really fun story. I love that author. I've, I have no idea how you pronounce his last name. I, I looked it up one time and I, I've forgotten, um, but it's a, it's a long, long last name. I think it's Portuguese with a lot of, uh, or maybe Italian with a lot of vowels in it. Um, so anyways, that story is, uh, he's, he's got a really, a lot of great stories about um, uh, like ecological disaster in the near future. So if you, if you like that kind of stuff, he's really interesting to read. He's got a lot of, uh, a lot of great short stories out there. So uh, people saying it's slag, it's set in this pretty distant future, it seems like the world is some kind of um, radioactive uh, disaster area, even worse than what we see in Wally. -E. Uh, and our, our, our heroes, or our protagonists, Chen and uh, Jack and Lisa, are, um, are able to survive in this because of something called Weevil Tech. Uh, and it's some kind of technology isn't fully explained in the story, that uh, allows them to like um, alter their bio biological um, uh, makeup as they wish, right? So they can heal really quickly. They can they heal really quickly. They don't really need food in the same way. They can like survive off anything. They can eat the radioactive dirt off the ground, um, right? To survive, they can alter their bodies. They like put spikes in Lisa's body at one point, <clears throat> right? And they're super strong, super fast. Um, so they've been, they're, they're these kind of post-human creatures, but they're, they're humans, right? These are, these are humans uh, that have been altered in this way using this weevil tech, right? Um, and, you know, it says there, there's some kind of uh, security force, and it's, again, kind of vague. We don't know for some kind of corporation. They, they have to go out and get in battles, so it's like uh, there is um, some kind of contention there. But it's not fully explained. It's not really the focus of the story, right? The, the, the focus of the story is these three mercenary characters um, living their lives. And they find this dog, which is a super rarity in this world. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing this dog could survive in this like blasted out hostile radioactive wasteland. But when they find this dog, it's, you know, it's a big deal. But at the same time, it's not like a ground shaking big deal, right? Nobody comes and takes the dog. They keep the dog and they don't keep the dog for any reason than curiosity, right? It's like a cool thing to have. It's like, uh, as I explained to one student, it's kind of like when a hipster grows a handlebar mustache, it's just kind of like a fun thing to have for them, right? But they find that it costs a lot of money. It's they have to look after it. They're not used to looking after biological creatures because uh, they can heal really quickly, right? But this dog keeps getting hurt and keeps getting sick and all this kind of stuff. So eventually, you know, spoiler alert, they do decide to eat the dog, right? And so, 
that's what the focus of the story is, right? It's about these three, you know, crazy super beings, but it's about their relationship with this dog. And that's, you know, when you write your essay, if you want to choose this story, that's great. You really want to focus on that relationship with the dog. Do they show empathy for the dog? Is that important? Does Chen more empathetic? You know, they get some scenes at the end, which are interesting, him reflecting on the dog. Does this make him human? Does it make him more human than Lisa and, the, and Jack? Or does it matter, right? This is, a, you know, it's up for debate. I saw some really interesting comments in the, um, the perusal of this story. People had really different takes on this. Uh, and, you know, it was really interesting because I have my own take and I was just interested to see other people's reactions. And any reaction's fine. Just remember, you need to support it with textual evidence, right? You just want to dig into the text. That's the main thing. Wally, um, the second text uh, we were looking at, the, you know, well-known Pixar movie about a little robot who's cleaning up this wasteland of Earth. Um, he's there by himself. He's just boxing up garbage every day, but he's really into human culture, right? He watches these old movies and collects things. And eventually he finds this plant, right? And he's nurturing. Uh, he falls in love with, uh, Eva, this other robot that comes down. So, you know, it's this, it's this world with no humans left on it. It's earth with no humans left on it. Just this robot that one could argue becomes human through his um, contact with human culture and through his nurturing and his his love of this other robot. So you could argue that. And, you know, again, like I mentioned earlier, the, ro the humans in that story are uh, kind of inhuman in a way, right? They're, they've lost some kind of element of humanity, maybe. You could argue, right? Um, so that's an interesting, and this is, you know, I thought this is an interesting pairing of texts, right? Because you have in the people saying in slag, you know, humans, who have altered themselves and maybe they lost something and then you have a robot who's a robot but somehow becomes uh, takes on human characteristics okay so that's the first two stories the second two stories um valedictorian and staying behind are all about uh, digital consciousness so valedictorian is this world where uh, you have this kind of enclave of humans and our protagonist thinks she's being protected from the outside by this enclave but then she learns that in fact, the Enclave is kind of like keeping them there, and if people want to come to them, they'll welcome them if they're willing to join the digital consciousness and move on to this next world. Uh, and then it kind of ends with her thinking about that choice, right? And it's an interesting story to think about and compare to Staying Behind, because in Valedictorian, our protagonist, uh, you know, is not treated well, right? She's She faces... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She faces obstacles because of her race and background, right? So she's dealing with these very kind of human uh, uh, evils, right? There's this baggage of humanity, of, of, of history and civilization, right? The, you know, the terrible things that we've done to each other in the past as humans. She's dealing with that baggage and here, and she, you know, she excels. She's very smart. She's very talented. And she has an opportunity to leave that behind and join this other world where that stuff doesn't exist, right? It's a digital world where uh, that kind, of, those kind of prejudices have been left behind, right? So that's that's the interesting thing about that story too. When you're reading through it, to think about um, when you're thinking about whether it's uh, uh, is she, you know, the anxieties and such about technology. I mean, does technology allow us to start over and get rid of some of these things, uh, move on from the the the, the terrible history of uh, some of human humankind. Uh, the second story, I'm running out of time here, so I'll wrap it up quickly. Uh, Staying Behind by one of my favorite um, science fiction authors. Uh, he's got a lot of great stories. Oh, by the way, you know, these two stories, there's great versions. I posted the links to uh, great audio versions from the uh, uh, LeVar Burton's podcast. Um, and he's got, he does great readings of both of these stories. There's an okay reading of the people saying the slag I posted as well. It's just, I don't know who that is, but it's this one I found, but the ones by LeVar Burton are, are really good, high production value. Anyway, so the staying behind story, uh, very different. It's also about uh, uploading to human consciousness, but our protagonist in that story is a man who really doesn't want anything to do with it, right? He values the old ways of doing things and, you know, being human, being mortal, being embodied in a body, right? Doing things with your hands, you know, all that kind of like uh, anti-technology stuff, right? And he wants to, he's trying to create a world or uh, maintain a world where people value these things over the digital, right? His his daughter doesn't agree. And it's about that debate, right? Uh, what do we value? And those two make a good pairing, right? 
Anyways, I've run out of time, so that's just a quick rundown of the stories and what you should be thinking about for essay number three.